Hello everyone and peace of Christ all of you. Please invite your friends and let us have some good time together. Uh, before we start, I saw a Muslim in the chat saying he's proud to be a Muslim. I'm so happy for you that you are so proud. And today we will make you more proud. And if you like to call me to see how much proud you are, feel free. Now, if you look at the uh, title about Muhammad, a copy-paste man, actually it's not just a copy paste you know we have a story in the quran to share you know all of us we like fairy tale stories and even sometimes we wish that the whole world is a fairy tale story you know a lot of colors cute things funny things stupid things fairy tale is exist for a reason In the time of Muhammad, the Muslim, they say to us, the Muhammadan, that when the Arab, they listened to the Quran, they were amazed. They didn't, they cannot understand how amazing this book is when the Quran is saying different story. The Quran saying the Arab, they laugh at the Quran. The Quran saying that the Arab, they say this is nothing but fairy tales. The Quran saying that we just we heard you know we heard this is before and this is nothing but fairy tales so they are proud but today we can examine how much proud they are there's do we have any Muslim here do we have any Muslim he have knowledge in Islam he would like to call us uh, where have you been for the four days do you Go Washington with your gun and the other Republican cowboy to support Trump. It looks like here we have an idiot. My friend, uh, our guns in America to fight criminals, not to kill each other. Secondly, uh, I think Biden will do better than Trump. And I will tell you why. Right away, Biden, he discuss, he decide to cancel all the peace agreement with Taliban, which is stupid Trump he was going to. I mean, can you believe that somebody, he is a president of USA negotiating peace with Taliban? How is that? So Biden looked like he is going to do better and soon he will start bombing Taliban again, while the stupid Trump was avoiding that for the last four years. Taliban are nothing but terrorists and Trump negotiating with them is a big mistake and now here we go biden is fixing that mistake so if you are happy that biden is there and you are a muslim you are mistaken secondly the history of democrat they are always against islamic countries biden he did uh, like uh, he left the ban on six countries but who is the one who put the ban first of all it was obama in the time of Obama, the warehouse uh, of uh, Pentagon became empty. Why? Because Obama was no, it was bombing nonstop in Afghanistan and in Iraq. So I don't know people; they are really funny and stupid. It doesn't matter who goes in the White House; the White House is not controlled by the president. It's just a stupid game, and have fun. And by the way, for the Muslims. Uh, Joe Biden is a Catholic and you know what does that mean right so if you are so happy uh, as I know the, the, the Muhammadan they consider the Catholic the biggest enemy so Biden is a Catholic remember that you know they say things in speeches and TV etc but behind the world they do something different you know Trump actually he was supporting Muslims he was really nice for the Muslims he arm this is how stupid he is he was arming Saudi Arabia he approved sales of more than 50 airplanes of uh, F-35, which is the most advanced airplanes, you know, ever to Emirat. I mean, this guy, he is just want to make money and he is arming the Muslims nonstop. So it was for your lose, you idiot, that Trump is gone. Trump actually in the last day before he leave, he, this is how stupid he is again. He forced Qatar and Saudi Arabia to shake hands. Do you see how stupid he is? So, and he is the one who put, uh, you know, sanctions on China because of Muslims. 
Saudi Arabia don't dare. Emirates don't dare. Turkey don't dare to say we will put sanctions in China because of Muslims. Trump, he did. So Trump, he was really supporting you. He's not against you, but you are a fool. Anyway, the, the Democrat, you know, they are always people who say things and they do the opposite. So like, let us say they are smarter in the presenting their case. So they present themselves, they are human rights fighters, they believe in equality, we will stop building the war, the wall. but it's uh, all this, you know, things is just a uh, propaganda industry in the, in the in reality, the story is different. Anyway, you know, uh, uh, Biden, he was in the office for eight years, what he did to the immigrant, nothing, what Obama did to the black people, nothing. And in the same time, go watch Joe Biden is speaking about how ISIS has started in, in Syria. I mean, I'm glad actually that uh, Trump is gone for now. And he did many stupid things, especially in the last week. You know, I don't approve any of what he, what he did. Uh, however, I believe Biden is going to teach Erdogan how to behave. So at the end of the day, USA is my country and we pray to any president who will take a lead. So the country will be successful. We pray for Biden to be successful, even though he is stupid. But who said that he is the one who is leading the country anyway? Time will tell. Anyway, we go back to our topic. So, you know, those stupid fools, they are worried about Trump. They are worried about Biden. You forgot this is a country. It's, it's, you know, it, it doesn't matter who is in the White House. They will control you. They will beat you and they will make you shish kebab. Biden or a Trump, it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, this is the most powerful country in the world and they will force you to eat as they want. They will force you to say as they want. They will force you to use their internet. They will force you to use your, their YouTube and etc. So only fool people think there is the difference between Trump and Biden. It's just one coin have two faces. Anyway, for me, I like, I like to support Trump for a very simple reason. He's against abortion. He put a Christian judges, right? I mean, there is there is certain things. Other, otherwise, the rest is stupid. Uh, Trump he did not even mention Ayah Sophia when when Erdogan he took it. You know, he converted to a mosque. Imagine how coward he is. Trump just because he have a business in in Turkey, he did not even mention Ayah Sophia. While Biden he did, and I think this is the reason he won. I believe that Trump he was punished for being a fool he claimed that he is a christian but in fact he never defend anything christians for i mean how in the world a man he take Hagia Sophia, and you don't in the same day he was posting about a dish a dish the whole world was talking about it but a trump he post that today he enjoy a dish this is how stupid he was and he got punished uh, we have Abdul Isaiah forty twenty two. Yeah, you know the Isaiah for uh, forty twenty two. It says the earth is a, is like a globe. Even that is a problem for them, isn't it? The earth and the Quran is a flat. So in the Bible it's a globe. In the Quran it's flat. Now let us continue with our topic. Remember always, we as a Christians, we always will be victorious. Doesn't matter who win the election. You know. Uh, I mean, I don't know how silly those people are. What is the first thing Biden he did before he go to take an oath on the Bible? He went to the church with his wife. I mean, it doesn't matter. You know, you see, this is how hypocrite they are. So when I'm, when somebody is trying to say that, you know, eh, you know, all of you, all of you, you will kiss the cross before you became a president in order to be a president. All of you, you will put your hand on the Bible so we can approve you. All of you. And those who they are thinking that there's a different, good luck. There's no different. Just wait. The only difference is that, uh, that said, Corona will run away because uh, Biden is in the White House. Actually, Corona called me and told me, hey, I'm leaving, but <laughs> Biden is coming. <laughs> I mean, mask up for 100 days. Anyway, so, you know, people are naive. People are stupid. Uh, uh, in fact, Trump, the only thing he did not do, the good thing he did not do, he did not go in war in the four years. Let us see the Democrat how many war they will go through in the coming four years or eight years. Just wait. And usually war happen where? 
in Islamic countries. So right now we have four Islamic countries are burning. Iraq, Syria, Yemen, Somalia. Four. Totally, uh, they are not burning, they are burned. Totally. All right. I think by the coming of Biden, I think we will have five, maybe six, maybe seven. You know, so we will have maybe two or three countries more are going to be burned. So just wait for that. Anyway, uh, don't get excited. Let me tell you something before we continue. When when Obama he won the election, I was so upset. I really was upset. <clears throat> but then Obama, uh, he is the one who refused to bomb Syria. Hmm. If Obama was not the president and John McCain was the president. John McCain was getting ready. He want badly to attack Syria and to take the president there. Now, I don't care for the president, but if this has happened, the Muslim Brotherhood will control Syria, and then we will have an Islamic state of the Caliphate of Erdogan. So thank God that Obama, he won, who is supposedly, we say he's a Muslim, not John McCain, who we supposedly, we say, we say he's a Christian. So my friend, God, he work in mysterious way, and we trust God, not man. So thank God that it was Obama who won, not John McCain. And actually me, I was supporting John McCain. Sometimes you support, but you do not know the future. You do not know what is hiding. So I'm so glad that it was Obama who won, not John McCain, because millions of Christians in the Middle East will be slaughtered if the stupid McCain was the president. All right? Obama created ISIS. We, we cannot say ISIS created since Muhammad time. ISIS is not is not a, is not an organization. ISIS is Islam, Islamic State. Why people call it ISIS? Islamic State. Who is the who is the founder of Islamic State? Muhammad. So don't fool yourself. Anyway, let us continue with our topic and uh, see the fairy tale of Muhammad. You, you see, guys, you took me away from. You know, this is what I want to disable the chat. In the chat, you find a bunch of fool. Even sometimes people who they are Christians, they act foolishly. We have a topic, they ask me questions, have nothing to do with the topic. And if a Muslim, he made a question, they try to direct us to that question, not to the topic. Sometimes I feel like we have a bunch of kids, not a bunch of adults. Shall I disable the chat so we can focus on the topic? You see, imagine, you enter a classroom and the classroom it says uh, phys uh, physic you know and then you start asking about history this is what some people here do they cannot focus on the topic because simply they are not listening and they are suffering from flight of thought like muhammad so the title is muhammad copy paste and now we are talking about trump why because there is some yeah. admins please Anyone go out of the topic, black him. Do we? Do you hear me? Give him a warning first time, time out, tell him why. Second time he do it again, black him. Kabich, we are done with the stupidity. How old are you, Mr. Zone? Here we go, you are blocked. That's an example. Those questions are right away should be blocked block the person who asked them why you want to know my age are you going to, uh, to, to date me stupid people stupidity is amazing now look at this nose and look at, the, at this beard and look at this hat how beautiful it is how fun to be living in a fairy tale in the quran if we go to chapter 9 verse number 61 we will find a verse speaking about Muhammad, the one who is nothing but ears. He listen, he copy, he paste. Let us see what the verse it says. Again, chapter 9, verse number 61. Let us go there. Uh, here we go. Look what the Arab were saying about Muhammad. And this is 
something mentioned in the Quran, not by me. And of them are those who vex the Prophet and say, he is only a hearer. Say, this is Allah saying to Muhammad to say, a hearer of good for you who believed in Allah and it is true to the believers. Hmm. But they are accusing him. I mean, look at the answer. It's like somebody saying to you, you are stupid. And then you say, stupid is good for you. Do you see it? But the question is, why they say he is a hearer? What does that mean? He is a person who hears a story, he copy it, he make it Quran. Is that my interpretation? No. Is that my explanation? No. Is that the Muslim interpretation? Yes. So let us go and see the Quran. Interpretation, not by Christian prince, because most of them will say to you, Oh, this guy is telling you a lie, it's not true. Well, this is your book. This is the official government website of the Kingdom of Jordan. Official government website of the King of Jordan, who he claimed that he is from the family of Muhammad. So, what they said, read carefully. You can read the whole thing, and uh, you know, the admin can post for you the link. It says here. Uh, there is a guy who is a black person. He's a black person, and here, by the way, you will see how filthy the the racism of the of 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 uh, 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 of the Arabian mind. You see, I'm an Arab, came from the Middle East. In their racism, is like a bread and breakfast. But when you speak to, speak to Arab, like when they are speaking the English language, they claim to be the most uh, tolerance, the most nice people, they don't discriminate, but this is absolutely false. Actually, if you are an Asian and you live in Saudi Arabia and you work, you know how they will treat you, just because you are Asian. If you have a blue, you know, blue eyes, a white skin, you will live like a king. They, they discriminate you because of your citizenship, discriminate you because of your color, they discriminate you because of your religion, they discriminate you because of how much money, and even discriminate you because of your age. However, here Muhammad, he said, speak about a man who laughed at Muhammad. This, this man who he laughed at Muhammad, his name, his name is Naptul ibn al-Harith. What this man he did? First of all, you will notice that when, the, when Muhammad, he get upset from somebody, he's a bully, Muhammad is the bully. He could not refute him, so he start making fun of his look. And what is the problem with his look? According to Muhammad, he's black. Read carefully. Whoever want to look like the, at, at the devil, let him look at Neptal ibn al-Harith. The man was tail barrier. He related the words of the Prophet, Allah bless him and give him peace. But how this man look like? How he looked like. Read carefully. If you go a line before, it says here. This verse was revealed about one hypocrite who his name is Naptal or Naptal ibn al Harith. This man was a dark skinned, red eyed, burned in the cheek, and deformed. So Muhammad said, if you want to see how the devil look like, look at this man. This is how bully Muhammad was. He is making the Muslim believe that a person who have a darker skin, now there is no way a person he have red eyes. I mean, have you ever seen a human being have red eyes? <laughs> red eyes? <laughs> All right. Uh, you know, like, I don't know, if you go hunting, if you go in the hunt, in the hunt, uh, if you have a flashlight, if you if you see like something like blue or like let, let sound, let us say bright blue or a green, that is a beast, which means a fox, a wolf, a lion, 
etc. Things eat meat. This is what their color or eye reflection. Uh, the one who look red is animals who eat grass. So at night they will reflect as red. And that means you are looking at either a rabbit, a donkey, a cow, a sheep, etc. So Muhammad, uh, uh, we have a Muslim here saying, he described one person, not the whole race. That will not change anything. Let us see what Amina is saying. Thank you, Amina, for the comment. So Amina, she is saying, and she is a Muslim, obviously. She said this. He described one person, not all the race. Okay, but why the devil he looked like him? Why the devil look black? If you go in different hadith, you will see your prophet. He says, the most person Allah he hate is someone he is black. He was talking about different story. Let us go there. Let us see. <clears throat> so Muhammad is not only in this case, always he is consistent in his hatred to the color of a black people. The one who will destroy the Kaaba is a black, the one the, the devil is a black. Uh, he de describe him actually the devil, he described him as an uh, uh, Ethiopian. Um, let me see, let me find the hadith. I don't want to mention something without giving proofs and reference. You know the Muslims, you show them the proofs, still they complain. They say he is lying. Okay. We are almost there. All right, look with me at this hadith. I will put it in the screen, and this is for you, Amina. I hope you will think about it carefully. And this is Sahih, not just a hadith. This is very authentic. Who is the most person Allah he hate? And I want Amina to think why he is black. Read carefully. The Prophet of Allah, he said. The Prophet of Allah, he said, this is not someone else say that, all right? He said, the most Allah, the, the most person Allah he hate is a black man, all right? Okay, but why? The most hateful among the creation of Allah is a black man. Why? What about me? I expose Muhammad. I laugh at him. I believe he's a false prophet. Why the most hateful person, the most person Allah he hates is a black man? Are you there, Amina? What about even dogs and animals? Just because they are black, Muhammad, he ordered to kill them. I mean, can you find me a reason? Why? Oh, a last word, sorry. What's wrong with the black dog? They asked the Prophet, what is the difference between a black dog and yellow dog and red dog? He said the black dog is the devil. Dogs, even dogs. Do you see it? 
they ask him what what the problem with the black dog why only black dog is the problem he said the black dog is the devil so obviously where it does say black skin what do you mean where it says black skin it says black skin in this here here we go huh. it says dark skin this is black what dark skin is <laughs> this is your translation by the way this is your muslim translation it says dark skin so dark skin is what is that a black is that uh, like redneck <laughs> I mean, you know, Muslims are really hilarious. <laughs> Where it says black, <laughs> dark skin is black. <laughs> anyway, so, and you know, we have tons of examples like the Suwaika. Who is this guy? He is an Ethiopian guy, a raising head. Who is this guy? This is Bilal himself. He called him raising head. I mean, Muhammad is... The, uh, what about the Quran? Allah, he said, in the judgment day, Allah will make all non-believers black and all believers white. Hmm? Do you know how to read? There is people who Allah will make them white and there is people who will make them black. Who are they those who Allah will make them black? Those are supposedly like me. So finally my dream will come true. I will be black. Do you see it? And here, the between two brackets, this does not exist in the trans. This is a translation. This is, you know, it says their faces will be white. So in the day, some faces will be white and some faces will be black. Okay, what will happen to those who they are white? They will go to heaven. Don't you see it? What about your prophet? He said that Allah created the black people from the left shoulder of Adam and he said, go to hell and I don't care. And he created the, uh, 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 the white people from the right hand of uh, right shoulder of Adam and he said to them, go to heaven and I don't, I don't care. That means they can post for you the link. You can go and read it. Then you will say to me where it says, it says even they are dark like circle. Dark like circle. All right. Even a black stone was white like milk, but the sin make it black. So Muhammad is making the idea as the following. Sin make you black, good make you white. Why the black stone became black? It was white like milk. The sin of mankind make it black. Uh, they say a gloom of a black. Where it says a gloom of black? Where it says a gloom of this is this is a stupid translation. You see, even even your translator he put it between bracket. Can you read? Don't you see it says between bracket? Can you read Amina or you are illiterate like your prophet? This is not in the Quran. Here we go. The Quran in front of me. Where is the gloom and where? Faces will be black. You change the translator, you will find a different story. However, just to help you, Ali Amina, as long as you are insisting to, to get me busted. Amina, what, tra what translation you like? What translation you like? Because I can open the translation for you. This is a translation of who let us see which Abdul. This is Yusuf Ali. Uh, let us go to Hilali, Muhammad Hilali, and Muhammad Khan. All of them they are Muhammad. <laughs> huh? Here we go. In the day of rejection, when some faces will become white and some faces will become black. As simple as that. This is your Muslim translation. Hello? So now you will say to me that Muhammad Hilali and Muhammad Khan, they work for me. Hmm? Uh, 
And you know, if you go to the chapter, as long as we are talking about fairy tale, we will go there later. Just wait. We will talk about chapter 27, verse number 82, because you remind me to speak about white and black. But let us go back to the fairy tale story. So the Arab they accuse Muhammad that he is a Disneyland boy. Any story he hear, he make it come in from his God. Why does the translation matter? Because you are the one asking me to read the translation. I mean, look at the, Amina, are you okay? What is the food you ate before you come? It is you who say it. Can't you see the word gloom? <laughs> now it says the translation matter. It doesn't matter for me. I speak Arabic. It matter for you. Is it, is it you who said to me it's a gloom? It says a gloom. Can't you read? But this is in the translation, so it is for you the translation matter, not for me. For me, I'm an Arab, I speak Arabic, I do not need this garbage. Which translation matter for you? Tell me so, so you don't play the game with me, because you will keep jumping like a monkey from a tree to a tree. Oh, this translation is wrong, and that translation is wrong. So what translation you like, you let me know, all right? Hmm. <clears throat> Why you make it a big deal? I will not going to make it a big deal. Here we go. I will ignore your text. Here we go. You are not a big deal no more. I, I was speaking to you as an adult, and now you are saying to me why you make it a big deal. I'm trying to teach you. Time out for you. You are a bad student. What a big deal? It's a big deal. It's a big deal. When you say clearly that you will make all good people white and all bad people black, it's a big deal. This is sick. This is hatred. People are not different because of their color. It doesn't matter if you are black or white. There's bad people, they are white, and there's bad people, they are black, or the opposite. Since when you are bad because just because of your color? What if I am blue? So it's a big deal. It's not a big deal for the idiots, for the racist. There's wonderful people, they are black, and there is bad people, and there is the same for the white people. So if we teach people that the bad ones are black, you know, what kind of world we live in? What about Asian? Your prophet, even he made fun of the Asian. He said there are people who they are like somebody hit their face with a hammer. So, hey, Ali, you wanna call me, Ali? Hey, Ali, you wanna call, my friend? You said, let us call, let us talk. We are talking. If you wanna call me, I will open uh, a pal talk for you, just for you. So look what the, the story here is. This black man, he made fun of Muhammad for he is a hearer, which means he is just a person who hears a story, and then he he take it, he accept it, and he add it in the Quran. So he is making fun of him. According to Muslim, this person is a hypocrite. He's a bad person. He is the devil himself. The, this man was a tail hair barrier. He related the word to the of the prophet. Allah bless him and give him all the peace. To the hypocrite and when he was told to stop doing this he said indeed muhammad but a hearer he believed everything that people tell him he's a fool in other ways he's saying muhammad is a fool you tell him a story he take it he believe it i don't agree with this guy i believe that muhammad he is a he's a fool in like let's say he don't have knowledge and he adopt what people adopt but he is maybe smart and how in the way like okay this is what they believe in let us fool them with it maybe or maybe he's just a fool who believe as he said we we say whatever we like and then we go to him and swear that we never said it and he believed he believe us and let me give you an example who of you muslims Is willing to give me a call. Let me open my Skype. 
just to show you that Muhammad is nothing but a copy paste fairy tale storyteller. <coughs> We are opening Pal Talk. Only Muslim they can text me. If you are a Christian, I will block you. Text me. Tell me I want to, to call you. <coughs> Here we go. We just get a message from somebody decided to leave Islam. Wonderful. But he have a long message. Mm. Okay. Oops, I was typing for him in Arabic. Oh boy. <coughs> All right, second one. Uh, Mr. Ali, are you going to, to contact me, my friend? Mr. Ali? You know what? I'm blocking you. Go to hell. Oh. You don't understand Islam? Bro, I'm a Muslim. I prove you wrong in what you said. Okay, I don't know what this guy is talking to himself. Let us call him. Oh, call is rejected. Ah, oh, he is not online. All right. I mean, this guy, he went out of you with me. Okay. Let us see. If there is any Muslim who would like to join us in the conversation, Only Muslims, only Muslims. I see many people sending me messages. I have nothing to do with it. Okay. Well, look like we don't have any Muslims, so we continue our topic. We were just wasting time. I don't read the text messages. If you send me text messages there, I just close them and block the person. Unless it says I'm a Muslim. All right. Now, let us see if Muhammad is a fairy tale teller or he is really a prophet. Shall we? How many of you believe in the fountain of youth? How many of you believe that there is a fountain? If you drink from it, you stay young and you live forever. And this is a question for everybody, Muslims, Christians, Hindus, Buddhas, whatever. How many of you believe in that? Anyone? Who believe in it? <clears throat> Left Islam when 220 started. Yeah, well, we actually this year we got blessed by many people who left Islam. In less than one week, we have almost, uh, I think, five or six people left in a year, which means every day almost one. Yeah, it was a good year. But let us go back to the topic. Who of you Muslims believe in the fountain of youth or the fountain of life? Anyone? Hmm. 
Because if you don't believe that Muhammad is a fairy tale storyteller, and he believe anything as this man he said about him in that chapter, chapter nine, verse number sixty-one, that Muhammad is just a hero. He hear a story, he make it, he make it a, uh, that his God told him. So who believe in it? Who is a Muslim believe in it? Do we have any Muslim believe in the fountain of youth? No Muslim believe in it suddenly? So you agree with us that Muhammad is a fairy tale storyteller? Focus with me on the topic, guys. So here you, there is a story Muhammad he mentioned, and this is a story Muhammad is copying from old uh, uh, legions. I don't know how many of you heard the story of Gilgamesh and other stories about a king who want to go and find where the fountain of youth so he can stay young and live forever, blah, 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 blah. And then he found it, and then they called him Mr. Green, Al-Khudr. Any Muslim? Who believe in it? A guy, his name is Al-Khudr. He is a prophet of Allah. The reason they call him Mr. Green because simply he drank from the fountain of youth and since then he never died and this guy he was in the funeral of Noah he was in the funeral of Abraham he was the funeral of Aaron the funeral of Moses and the funeral of, of Muhammad this guy was ever all, all over the place why because he drank from the fountain of life Moses he thought he is the most advanced person in the world when it's come to knowing God and knowledge from God. And then Allah, he said to him, Mus Moshe, you are stupid compared to Al-Khadr. You know what, Moshe, I'm going to send you for a training. I will send you to Al-Khadr and he will train you. This is how high Al-Khadr is. It's like he is the guru, you know? It's like, you know, he, he was... Uh, uh, the, the the hole in the narrative the, the, uh, the standard narrative have holes you know so Moshe he 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 felt he thought he he knew you know so he said to uh, his uh, assistant or one of the Jews he said to him huh, they asked him who is the most uh, uh, servant of Allah he knew he said me Allah he said to Moshe hey Moshe <laughs> stupid Moshe <laughs> it's not you what what? Read when you carefully. Allah Messenger said, Moshe, or Moses, he got up to deliver a sermon before the children of Israel. Bani mean children. And I, it's funny how Muslims translate. I mean, translate is, they translate the whole thing and now you're stuck with Bani. I mean, have you ever heard of a stupid translation like this? I, 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 okay, how somebody now is reading will know what Bani mean. He translated the whole thing, but Benny, no. We keep Benny as it is, brother. <laughs> All right. So, uh, delivered the sermon of the children of Israel, and he was asked, who is the most learned person among the people? See, like, you know, one of you call me now, and he say, hey, Christian Prince, who is the most one person he knows in the world? I would say, Christian Prince, brother and sister. I confirm for you that I am the most eligible person in the world. Okay. So, Moshe is very humble. He said, me. Look how humble he is. Musa replied, I am the most learned. Allah then admonished Moshe. He said, hey, Habibi, Moshe, why you are saying that, Habibi? Huh? For he did not ascribe all the knowledge to Allah only. <laughs> Moshe, he did stupid thing. He did not add the word Allah at the end of his sentence. I mean, can you believe it? How you do that, Moshe? So Moshe, you know, uh, he said that. And then 
Allah decide to send Moshe for a training. <clears throat> then the divine came, inspiration. He said, yes, one of ourselves at the, at the junction, junction of the two seas. Like, what? Is more learned than you? There's a junction of two seas, and there's there, there's somebody has learned learn more than Moshe. Moshe, he wanna go, he cannot wait no more. He was lucky at that time, there's no corona, so he can go, you know, and there's no visas. So Moshe, he asked his servant, and his name is Yeshua ibn Nun, which means Yeshua, the son of the whale. So he said to him, get ready, Allah will send me for a training. Musa said to Allah, Oh, my Allah, how can I meet him? Allah said, Take a whale, not a fish. In translation, it says a fish. You see, Muslim, you say to me, Muhammad is not a fairy tale storyteller, right? Read carefully. Take a fish in the basket, but this is not a fish, it's a whale. In Arabic, it says hoot. In the basket, and whatever, whenever the fish lost is lost, follow it. Look, what? But this is a dead. This is a dead fish. Like, hello? Follow the dead fish. Hey, Muslims, how many of you said to me, Muhammad is not a fairy tale story teller? So the verse in the Quran is true. The Arab, they were making fun of Muhammad, for he is simply just an idiot who copies stories and he mentioned, claiming that Allah is the one taught in those stories. So, Whenever the fish is lost, follow it. But how we can follow a dead fish? Later you will find out. I'm amazing. Hmm? And you will find him in that place. You will find who? Mr. Green, the one who knows better than Moshe. So Moshe set out along with his attendant, Yeshua ibn Nun. And they carried with them a whale. Look like it's a small, small whale. Till they reach the rock, and rested there. I mean, look at the road, man. I mean, you, uh, Moshe, he took the highway. Hold on, I, I'm going to show you what we are talking about because many of you are not good in geography. Hmm. All right. <clears throat> so, Moshe, Moshe, he was here in Israel. And Allah, this is where Moshe is, okay? I hope the, the thought is clear. And Allah told him that there is someone he knew more than you, and they live in Bahrain. This is Bahrain. And this is Quran, by the way. This is Quran. So Moshe, he told his uh, attendant or his servant, get ready and take with you a whale because Allah, he order us. When we lose the whale, we follow the whale and the whale will tell us where is this guy. Okay. So Moshe, he took his uh, transportation at that time, it used to work by battery, and he went all the way here. And the story, and, and they stop until they find a rock. I mean, how many rock in the way? Imagine how many thousands of kilometers we are talking about. And they stop until they find the rock. What rock? Do we have any Muslim going to say something? They stop when they found the rock. I mean, isn't it all the road full of rocks? At that time, he have like I have highway and uh, there's no rocks in the way. So they keep going, going, going until they found the rock. Like what? What rock? And how they knew this is the rock? And how many million rocks in the road? So they keep going, going, going until they found the rock and they stop there. Bingo. Takbir. 
True story. This is true story. Muhammad is uh, not a fairy tale teller. No, he's telling the truth. So here they keep going, keep going, keep going until they reach the rock. Like what? How do they knew which rock is that? Let it go, let it go. The best thing about those stories is not to think much because you will have headache. And the best scenario, you will have heart attack. It's like watching an American movie, you know, like Sylvester Stallone. He's just, I mean, okay, he have a browning gun. Okay, how many bullets is there inside? 14. Okay, how 14 bullet gun can shoot 20? Don't ask, it's Sylvester Stallone movie. Like, hello? American movie, brother. This is an American movie at the time of Muhammad. <laughs> so, they keep, he keep going, keep going until they reach the rock. And when they reach the rock, they rested there. Ooh, one trip, one way did not rest in the way. I mean, it's going to take them two months to arrive. They keep going and stop and they, and they rested there. Hmm. Moses, and look at the details, brother. Moses, he put his head down and slept. Mm -hmm. This remind me of this picture. Oof. Which one of them is Moshe? This is Moshe and his servant. I'm not sure. I think the one with the gray hair is Moshe. So now they keep going, keep going, keep going until they arrive to the rock and now it's... <laughs> And look, actually, look at the look at the at Moshe beard is moving like from the Muslims. Be honest. Who of you is not convinced that Muhammad is a fairy tale story teller? Let me exit Pal Talk because look like there's no Muslims want to contact us. Okay, bingo. So we go back to the story, which is a true story. But Kuffar don't believe in it, brother. Because they are stupid, Kuffar. We are smart believers. They are stupid. We are not stupid. So he put his head down and he slept. Uh huh. And then Sufyan, the sub narrator, said, Somebody other than Amr said, I give it back anyway, at the rock, there was a water spring called Al Hayat. Let me drink some because I have some of it. My grandfather he saved some for me. That's why I'm very young. Mm. I drank too much. I hope I will not get. I will not become two years old again. Because last time I drank too much, I became two years old. I woke up in the morning. I wanna like I didn't know how to uh, put my shoes. All right. Anyway, so uh, uh, there was a spring of water called Al Hayat. Al Hayat in Arabic means the life. What the name of the spring of the water? Life. And brother, none, none, brother. You know what none mean? I mean, this none is big. This is a big deal, none. I mean, this none can destroy you. None, do you know what none? It's not like none like yours. This is the real none. This is the none as an exception for nothing ever before. And none, look how me. I love the none there. Come in touch with, it's not, you don't even need to drink the water, you touch the water. Come in touch with the water, but become alive. Mean, if you touch the water, you become alive. What will happen if you drink it? Hmm? Any Muslim? <clears throat> So, you know, when a Muslim, he says that we don't know, you know, this guy is not telling the truth. Uh, you know, this is not a true, he is lying to you. I mean, this is your official website. This is Ayil Bukhari. This is Ayil Bukhari. And the one is talking is your prophet. And then they say to us, he's lying. 
Okay, you can say that, but people are laughing. I mean, this is... So here it says, none came in touch with the water, but became alive. And this is what happened to Al-Khadr. Khadr, his name is a green. I told you before why his name is a green, right? Because supposedly, uh, after he drank from this water, if he sit anywhere in the grass, even though the grass is dead, the grass will become a green again. All right, guys, ignore this Ali. Where is Ali? Let us block him. You know, we waited in Pal Talk for an hour and now we exit. Uh, no, he says, call me. But time user out. We have no time for kids. So, so some of the water, so guys, when they said, it's called Al-Hayat, none come in touch in it, but became alive. So some of the water of the spring fell over the fish. Uh -huh. Like what? So it moved. <sighs> Hold on. I mean, we need to understand the story in a better way. Guys, don't tell me about someone want to call me. We exit pal talk already. This guy is a kid. Uh, those guys, they took a fish with them from Israel all the way to Bahrain. Will take them at least six to seven weeks to arrive using the camel or donkey or whatever they are using. And the fish with them all this time from here to Bahrain and then when they arrived to Bahrain they sat next to the rock this is the rock and the fish was next to the rock this is Mrs. Fish And then a drop of water from the spring, brother, boom, 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 hit the fish. And then the fish just start moving. Alhamdulillah. And if we ask Zach and Nick about this, I mean, Zach and Nick will confirm it. Don't you agree, Zach and Nick? Exactly. And actually, I believe it's a true story. And I can't prove it scientifically. Right now, if there is a 35th, what's that can I? If there is a 35th, 35th fish, <laughs> Christopher, stop laughing. Yes, there is 35th. As an example, if you are a fifth who live in a in a fifth water, and then we put you in the salty water, you are going to get 30. Ah, okay. So see if there is 30 is I can actually is dead. It's a dead fish. Not thirsty. <laughs> thirsty fish. <laughs> I mean, where is this guy Christian Prince? He come with this story. I don't know. I mean, yeah, some you know some people think I I write them before I go. I just make it up. You know. By the way, some Muslim in the in the chat they would say Christ Zachary and I did not say that. Christian Prince is lying. Honestly, there's there's even Muslims. They make a video about about uh, you know there is a there is somebody he made a, he made a call in YouTube between Zachary Naik and Christian Prince. But this is not real. I mean, this is me speaking. You know, <laughs> the Muslim they start saying Christian Prince is lying. He never debated. Uh, uh, you know, <laughs> Zachary Naik. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Oh boy, okay. Um, I mean, I could not believe it that even Muslim they think that this is, I mean, isn't it obvious this is a joke? Uh, here we go. This is the this is the video.
<sighs> I'm trying to find the story. Wee, 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 wee. I mean, what this drama is about? What this drama is about? Fake Isa, real Isa, the real Isa look like fake Isa, and the fake Isa look like real Isa. So now people they think this is Isa, but this is not Isa. But but the real Isa, Isa, so but the Isa, but the other one Isa. However, the question they say it's Isa, but the it's not Isa. And Isa then asks Isa when he went to heaven and said Isa. And then and Allah he took the Isa Isa. Now you know how the Jews they thought it this is Isa in the cross, but he did not Isa. But the fact that true Isa was not really crucified, it was the fake Isa was crucified. And Allah blood. Okay, hold on. <coughs> Unbelievable. Should we call Zach and Nayak? And, and here the Muslim drama started. They will start saying Christian Prince is faking a debate with Zach and Nayak. Shall we? <laughs> the Muslim is asking us who was on the cross. <laughs> That's hilarious. Hello? 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 Who this? Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum uh, uh, We have a question, really. Who was in the cross? Because we have uh, Christian guys here, they are asking questions about that. Okay. Brother and sister, some Christian, they ask you a question. They say to you, it is the true Isa was in the cross. However, this is absolutely wrong. Because Allah, the Almighty God, He made someone look like Isa. He had the same iPhone. He had the same mustache. He had the same beard. He had the same eyebrows. He had the same eyes. Actually, his eyes is very beautiful. Both, they look exactly the same. To the point, the Jews, and you know the Jews are very smart. You cannot fool the do. You cannot fool the do. However, Allah is the best of the deceivers. So Allah, he made someone look exactly like Isa to the point they could not recognize the true Isa from the fake Isa. So when they came to arrest Isa, they arrested the fake Isa. And this is how Allah, he saved Isa. So now the question, who was in the cross? It was the fake Isa or the true Isa? The answer is very simple. Allah knows best. Because it may be that Allah, he sacrificed the true Isa and he saved the fake Isa because both look the same. However, this is an allegation made by a guy his name is a christian prince don't ever listen to him and whatever he say to you don't say yes don't say no thank you very much this is a religion this is a religion and speaking about logic and separation between the soul and the body hmm? let it go let it go I have a talent? Sure, I'm full of talent. It's God gift, my friend. So now, the Muslim is confused. After all what we gave you, he's asking, was Christ in the cross united, the soul united with the flesh or not? Abdul, uh, Abdul, listen to me carefully. I love all the Abduls. When Jesus was on the cross, he was still alive, right? Mm -hmm. That's mean at that moment when they when they killed him, I don't want to use the word sacrifice, when they killed him, they killed him and the soul was there. However, you speak here about existence because you are ignorant like you're a prophet. The existence of the word of God, of the Christ, have nothing to do with the existence of the body. Jesus said in my, many places, in the Bible that he is exist always as an example he said before Abraham I am the Jews they said to him how you are before Abraham and you are not even 50 years old how you can be exist before Abraham this is a statement of somebody is not aware of what he is saying unless it is truthful before Abraham I am but how you can be before Abraham but you are a young man he is exist before his birth he said I am Anyway, you can watch the video, but uh, you know, the, I mean, this is how sometimes uh, 
we are desperate to debate those who claim to be scholars, you know? Really. I mean, we wish we can debate them all, but they don't dare to debate us. This is the truth. This is the truth. We offer Zach and Nick, we offer all of them, without naming one by one. But all of them, they will find an excuse to get away and not to make a debate. Uh, there is other cartoon they made for Zach and Nick too. Here we go. <coughs> This uh, this is sound like a mix. Let us see. Here we go. So here is supposedly, and here you know, uh, even this one, the Muslim thing. This is not. Uh, I mean, uh, like I fabricated to make myself debate in Zakir Naik. Hi brother, let us call Zakir Naik. Assalamu alaikum. As Christian Prince, Christian Prince, please for the God, for the sake of Allah, leave me alone. I told you one million times, don't call me after middle of the night. First of all, I might be having sexual intercourse with my wife now. Secondly, this is sexual harassment. <laughs> Number three, I have no answer for you. Hey brother, but we have a question here about this verse in chapter 66, verse number three. I mean, what Allah, what the Prophet, he told his wife a secret and then the secret spread around and the secret became very well known and then Allah told him about it. And then Allah, he made him know part of, the, a part of it and avoid the part. What is that part? Okay, I will tell you. First of all, don't ever listen to Christian Prince. He always, first of all, Show me your faith. Show me your faith. I will give you the answer. Victor uh, uh, Zakir the people want to know. It's not forget about Christian Prince. I cannot forget about seeing your faith. I am sure you had in your faith because of a very, 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 very reason. Very, very good reason. Okay, Zakir maybe I don't look good, man, like you, you know. You look good. I don't look good. Why do you want to show my face? I know it. I know it. I am sexy and I know it. Thank you very much. The medical science tells us you eat pig, you behave like pig. I'm sexy and I know it. <laughs> Let us unmute the, the song. <laughs> anyway, I don't know who, who, who did this uh, cartoon, but it's funny cartoon. So now he's like, like, like sing, he's singing, he, he's sexy and you know it. So anyway, show me your face. Uh, this is the only excuse. They, you know, they run away from debating me. So we're going back to the topic. So Muslims, who of you really can tell us if Muhammad is just a fairy tale story teller or he is a true prophet. Who of you believe in the fish who've been touched by the water? Who of you believe in the sunset in murky water? Who of you believe that there is a prophet, his name is Al-Khudr, he took Moshe and he did a lot of things to teach Moshe? Who of you believe in those stories? Who of you believe that a fish she she swim in the ocean and she made a rock road highway a highway made it from rocks and this is in the quran who of you believe and then they found al khadr sitting in the middle of the ocean in the top of a rock who of you believe let us continue the story so some of the water of the spring fall over the fish. So it moved and slipped out of the basket and entered the sea. Look, there's a spring of water which is not in the sea. And I'm assuming that those guys did not really sit in the sea 
I mean, it's a spring of water. So how the fish keep going and moving in the land? Don't ask questions. When Moses wake up, woke up, he asked his attendant, bring the early meal. And this is Quran chapter 18, verse number 62. The narrator say, added, Moses did not suffer from fatigue except after he had passed the place he had been ordered to observe. This is a sign, brother. So look, Moses, he did not suffer from fatigue traveling all the way from Israel all the way to Qatar, brother, all the way to Bahrain, sorry. He did not suffer from fatigue. But when they arrived to the location where Allah wanted them to stop, Allah made him suffer from fatigue. So this guy, he was going almost for two months, non-stop, non-stop, he don't get tired, non-stop, non-stop, non-stop. And then he arrived to Bahrain, and here there's a rock. And then Allah made him feel tired. So suddenly, uh, Moshe collapsed, like, I want to sleep. And then the spring of the water, I mean, look at the plan of Allah. Do you see how beautiful the plan? So Allah told Moshe to go, but Moshe don't know where to go. I mean, okay, there's a rock. Okay, where rock? And by the way, I'm not going to ask you Muslims how Moshe, he went here. I mean, why he did not go in that direction? Or in that direction? <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, and the funny, it says in the Quran that this is the junctions of the two seas. But there is no two junction of two seas. Where are the two seas? Bahrain is called Bahrain for the ignorant. Because at that time, they thought this is a sea by itself. They cannot see the image, the full image. So they thought that this is a different sea. But this is the Persian Gulf. What two seas? Where is the two seas? Where is the junction of two seas? Anybody can tell me? Where in Bahrain there's a junction of two seas? How the Quran makes such a silly mistake? So anyway, he arrived here to Bahrain. And then he found the rock, then he stepped next to the rock, and then the sum of the water of the uh, came in the in the whale, and the whale slipped and went in the in the in the sea. And then what happened next? If there is any Muslim still is not convinced that Muhammad is a fairy tale story storyteller, and he is copying Dijan's stories. So then he said to him, Bring us an, an, uh, the meal. Hmm. The narrator added, Musa did not suffer from fatigue except after he had passed the place he had been ordered to observe. His attendant Yeshua said to him, Do you remember what happened when we betook ourselves to the rock? I did indeed forgot about the fish. <laughs> the narrator added, So they come back re retracting their steps they don't know how to go back i mean there's no sign at that time think about it so they you know like follow their steps like where well, you come here we come here okay and then they found in the sea a way of the fish looking like a tunnel like what so the fish went in the sea and then wherever the fish is going there's a tunnel Any Muslim have a comment? Anyone? Any Muslim? There's a tunnel, the fish went in the ocean, or in the sea, and there's a tunnel. 
you follow the in the in the, in the sea. By the way, I you know I I went in that tunnel, but you know because what happened, you know my grand 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 grandfather, he invested, you know he he wanted to open a Disneyland, but the corporation of America they fought him, they did not they called the king of Bahrain and they told him don't give him a license. So what my grandfather did, you know like he. He, you know he's smart he moved the tunnel and now it's exists in the caribbean yeah this is where the you know the the pirate of the caribbean they use it you know like the, you find like you go they flip the fish i mean the, the ship flip and then go and appear from the second other side this is the tunnel which made my grandfather a tunnel which is made by the fish which is made by al khadr a fish brother yeah true story I'm sure all of you believe me now, right? Now, be honest, Muslims. If somebody come to you and tell you the story, aren't you going to die laughing? So why you believe in Muhammad saying those stories? Any Muslim can tell us? How in the world do you believe in this story? Anyone? And then you can read the rest of the story. It's really amazing, stupid story. This is a true story, yeah. I mean, this is. I mean, okay. What? What do you mean a true story? Are you saying Prophet Muhammad is telling a lie? For sure, it's a true story. Hey, Ali, get, get out of here, Ali. You're just a kid. What is your name in Paltok, Ali? This is the last chance. All right, Ali? This is your last chance. Tell me your name in Paltok. I will open Paltok just for you. If you don't, <clears throat> give me your name in Paltok. This is your last chance because this is what you do. After I go in Paltok, you don't, you know, uh, you, you waste my time. And you don't do anything. Okay, hold on. <clears throat> Did he mention his name in Pal Talk? If you don't mention your name now in Pal Talk, I'm going to block you. Are you there? All right, let me find you. <coughs> uh, there is no such a name can be found. There's no name like that. You are fabricating things up. See? No such a name can be found. Cape underscore 2022. See it? Okay. So I'll give you one more. Uh, no, I see. Actually, hold on. <coughs> you have to update your pal talk. It says you have to update your pal talk. I could not call you because your pal talk is old. Update your pal talk. I will give you a few minutes to update it. So we continue. <coughs> and those stories are all over the Quran. Actually, the same chapter, chapter 18. This is the chapter, this is number one chapter in fairy tale stories. All the stories mentioned there is fairy tales of other nations. 
as an example the seven sleepers this is a story written by a christian bishop from syria about discrimination for the christians how they will be discriminated they will be slaughtered they will be killed but then the christians will be victorious muhammad he copied the story he put it in the quran the story of alexander the great the man with the two horns Again, this is a story written by someone he himself too is from Syria. Muhammad, he copied it, he put it in the Quran. He went all the way and he found where the sun set, he found all, where, all the way where the sun rise, he found the sun set in the murky water, he found the people of Gog Magog, which are not a human. Let us try if Ali is ready. It says you are not online, my friend. I will give you a few minutes more. Otherwise, I will consider you playing a, playing a, you know, like a gamer. <clears throat> Do we have any Muslim want to say anything? Anyone? <clears throat> yeah, the two horn, the two horns, simply this the, the Roman kings, you know, they wear two horn when they go for war. This is the close of war. They, you know, this is what uh, uh, supposed is Zulkarnain. This is what they call him Zulkarnain, mean that they with the two horn. But the Muslim, they have their own story about Zulkarnain. They say that the reason he became a man with the two horn, because first time he came to his people to invite them to convert to Islam. And then they refused. So they hit him with the hammer in his head. And then he got the first hammer, first, first horn, and he died. Allah raised him from death and he sent him again. And then he invited them to, to convert to Allah. And then again, they hit him second time with the hammer. This is how he got the second uh, horn. This is the Muslim stories. Are you there, Ali? I will call you one more time, Ali. See, Ali? Call is rejected now. This time it's rejected. I send you an update, and now it says call rejected. See it? Shame on you, Ali. You are just a kid. Yeah. Now I will block you. For real. Take a hike. So, so the accusation in the Quran that Muhammad was nothing but a hearer, he hears stories and he report them again, is true. The Quran have tons of you know of a time the Arab saying to Muhammad, "This is nothing but fairy tale stories. We heard it before you." If you search for the word asatir as an example, what asatir mean? Fairy tale. You need to ask yourself why the Arab they mention this to Muhammad. Uh -huh. Why they mention the word fairy tale? Look how many times. Look, look how many times. Look. It says here found nine times as a result. Nine times the Arab saying to Muhammad, This is nothing but fairy tales. We heard it before. We heard our, you know, fathers speaking about it. What, what were you, what are you telling us? This is stories for kids. We heard it before you. Verily, this is what we have been promised, and we, we and our father before us. This is only the tales of the ancient. We know those stories. And they knew that he was learning it from other people who they are around him, they are slaves. 
like there's a slaves are coming from Assyria as an example Assyrian slaves there's Salman al Farisi foreigner slaves it's a fairy tale fairy tale stories the tales of the ancients which has written down and he keep giving us those fiction stories so when the Muslim they say that the Arab at that time they were amazed with the Quran the fact the Arab was laughing at the Quran the Arab became amazed with the Quran after Muhammad he conquered them because who dare to, to laugh at it and the proof that they are not convinced the day Muhammad he died tons th tens of thousands of Arab they left Islam you can go right now and search for the war of apostate why they left Islam just because Muhammad he left he, he died right Do we have any Muslim? Want to say anything? Anyway, you know, human beings sometimes is funny. And uh, even the one who they are educated, like, you know, if we ask someone like Yasser Qadi, how you believe in this story? What Yasser Qadi would say? Do he dare to say this is not a true? He don't dare. When this guy he said something about the you know the the preservation of the Quran is is a stupid idea. There's a you know a, a hole in the standard narrative. The Muslim they humiliate him. They made fun of him. They you know they fought him. You know it's a big war against the guy just because he said a sentence, a truthful sentence about what he believed. In order to get back what he lost, he started attacking the Christians for something he said. This is what happened. They say it, and then they regret it. <clears throat> you know, they say to you that Islam is a peaceful religion. Muhammad, he made it clear. The one who changed his religion, kill him. When they say to you, Islam, Islam is a peace, and you know, it's a, this is a this is a statement of the of politics and foolish people and liars. This is what Muhammad said: Whoever changed his religion, kill him. I mean, how simple is that? Yeah, maybe I should get uh, Yasser Qadi, but you know, Yasser Qadi, the coward, he report anyone play his videos. You know, this guy is like a kid. You use his video, he report you right away. He's a kid, you know, he's, he's not a man. He's just a potato. <clears throat> Anyway, so it looks like we don't have any Muslim, but as you see, you know, to, to believe in such a story is you have to be literally an ignorant, a child, uh, immature. Otherwise, who in the world would believe in such a story? A fish came back to life because the fountain of youth, some water touched it, and none come in touch with this water but became alive. A prophet, he went all the way to Bahrain to learn from a guy, his name is Al Khudr. And this guy was exist in the time of Noah, in the time of Adam, in the time of uh, 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 Musa, in the time of uh, Abraham, in the time of Muhammad. I mean, this guy, until now he is alive, but in earth, not in heaven. Why? Because he don't die. Where is he, by the way? Any Muslim knows where we can find Al Khudr? Where we can find the fountain of youth. People are dying left and right and right. Do you believe in this story, Spirit 40? Mr. Spirit? 
as long as you are a Muslim. Do you believe in this story? <clears throat> Who is, you know, who is the one when I believe that there is a stone is going to come in the judgment day is going to have eyes and tongues. Like I, I can accept that met metaphorically, but this is not what Muhammad said. A, a prophet of Allah, his name is Al-Qurnayn. He built a dam between us and Gog and Magog. Where we can find this dam? And Gog and Magog, they are, the ratio of them is 1000 to 1 which means if we are 7 or 8 billions they are 8 trillions where we can find them do you believe the bible tell to kill people yes the bible says yeah in the war yeah spirit he is saying to you do you believe the bible says yeah the bible says that this is the bible report in history but this is what the muslim do they cannot answer so they change topic what does have to do with the killing What what this topic? You see, you know this is what happened when 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 a nail hit your head, and the nail is causing pain. So what we do? We change the topic. Do you believe the Bible teaches to kill? Do you? Yeah, the Bible says that. Yeah. This book you are talking about is written thousands of years ago, and people in war, and until now people kill. What's new? But fountain of youth? A dam between us and the creature, they are called Mog Gog and Magog. And those people, Gog and Magog, each time they try to make a hole in the wall and almost they are there, they forgot to say inshallah, so Allah block it just because they forgot to say inshallah? Hmm? If you go and check the comment after this video is finished, you will find not a single Muslim speak about the topic. They will talk about Jesus is not God. They will talk about uh, the Bible says uh, kill. They, they will talk about anything except answering what we have in front of us. This is the truth. They never speak about the topic. Why? Because they cannot answer this. What they can say? Actually, I challenge Muhammad followers to mention to me one story Muhammad said is not fiction. As an example, Allah made someone look like Jesus. Allah, he sent Jibreel to Muhammad and he looked like his boyfriend. Muhammad, he received an angel in his bedroom and his wife, she did striptease so she can discover if this is shaitan or this is an angel. I mean, look at the stories. What is this? Even his story with Aisha is a fiction. Let us remind you. Do you remember what Aisha she said? I mean, have you, this guy, he have no witness for anything. Even his sexual life, it was alone. Which means there's no witness. Aisha, she said that the prophet he imagined himself having sex with his wives, but in fact, he did not. Read it. Narrated Aisha said, the prophet continued for such and such a period, imagining that he had sexual intercourse with his wife, but in fact, he did not. So what was the excuse? Muhammad was bewitched. Even this excuse is a, is a, is a fiction story.
any Muslim. The Prophet was bewitched. How we can trust this guy? I mean, if you Muslim agreeing that the Prophet was bewitched, and then it took Allah 12 months to fix the bewitched. Look, I mean, look how strong Allah is. It took him Allah 12 months every because the guy he made for him a knot. What he made? He made a knot. Okay, and he made a 12 knots. Uh-huh. So it took Allah 12 months to unknot the knot. I mean, look at this. How, how in the world a human being can believe in this? That there is somebody, and this is in the Quran. Knots. Muhammad, he seek refuge. By Allah from the one who blow in the knot. <laughs> this is one of the most funny, stupid chapters in the Quran. All of it is just, just uh, five verses. See, I seek refuge by Allah and the Lord of daybreak. The Lord of daybreak? What about the night? From the evil that he has created. Okay. And from the evil of darkening night, it's come with the darkness, etc. This is stupid, you know, what is darkness? The, you know, waqab here. Min sharri ghasiqin idha waqab. The evil of the penis when it stands up. And if you have my book, Six and Allah, you will see all the reference. Muhammad praying to Allah, saying, I seek refuge by Allah from the evil of the penis when it stand up. You know what does that mean? And then he continues saying, and from the evil of witchcraft, when they blow in the knot, blow in the knot, we can control somebody by blowing in the knot. Control me, here we go. Who wanna control me by blowing in the knot? Okay, well, I feel something. I feel I feel something. Oh, okay. I think it's working. Somebody is blowing not on me. Now he is making me drink tea. And now he's making me draw in the screen. I am under his control. He's making me make knots. Not, not. I will keep making knots until I drive you knots. Not. He is a naughty guy. He's controlling me from far. This is I don't know what I, I don't know how to stop, but he's making me make knots. The power of the knot. I mean, if you have a mother-in-law, all what you need is to do is just get a knot, man. Blowing the knot for her, you will blow her mind. She woke up in the morning, she think you are the most uh, handsome uh, guy. Just, who would it take you a knot? You know, just get a knot. And the more knot you make, the more you make her crazy. <laughs> oh boy. Knots. The prophet was controlled by a bunch of knots. Somebody make a knot for him. A knot. A prophet of God was controlled by a knot. So what remote control for? And Allah saying to Muhammad, say I seek refuge by Allah from the witchcraft of the blow of the knot. This is the advice of Allah. So this is the medicine supposedly. Well, if this is the medicine, how come it's not working? So why Allah he sent two angels to save Muhammad? That is a coconut knot. What? Croquet, croquet knot. I don't know what does that mean. Oh, I don't know what to say. And the evil of the invier when they invade. Hmm. Knots. Yeah.
True story. Very true story. We have to agree. I mean, you can control somebody by the knot. The prophet of the voodoo. And the top of that, to make it more funny, Allah, he sent two angels to teach, to open a school, to teach making knots. Who is the first one who opened school for magic before Harry Potter? Allah. If you go to chapter 2, verse number 102, you will find that Allah, he sent two angels. Their name is Harut and Marut. And those are stories taken from the legend before Islam too. That there's two angels sent by God. They landed in the Babylon Tower. And they open a school there. And they make a disclaimer. This magic we teach you is just to make the man and the wife fight. Be honest with me. How many of you is fighting with his wife his, these days? How many of you? Is having a problem with your wife if you do my friend the answer is in the Quran Allah he opened a school by two angels their name is Harut and Marut Harut he said to Marut ask permission from Allah to open a school Allah he said your permission is given it go and then Allah he sent Harut and Marut and then they open a school. But there is a story about this Harut Marut too. You know, they saw a, they saw a woman, her name. Anyone remember her name? Anyone remember her name? The women, they saw her. I mean, they are angels and they have sex with the women. Anyone remember what her name was? Just to show you how much the fiction is mixed in, in, in Islam is. Oh. Now, what do you remember? <clears throat> Zahra, which is Phenos, exactly. So, in Arabic, they call it Zahra. This is the same plant of Phenos, Venus. So, Venus is a woman. She came to them and she is very sexy, and you know it. She came to Harut and Marut, and those angels, they never saw a beautiful woman before. I mean, look at me. I never saw a beautiful woman before. So, put yourself in my shoes. I'm an angel. And first time I see Venus, what will happen to me? I will get dizzy. Go crazy. So right away when they saw they saw Venus, you know, Harut and Marut, they said, play her to please, they take off your clothes. Venus, she said to them, get lost, you idiot. I don't take off my clothes that easy. They said, so what do you need to do? She said, there's three things you need to do. Anyone remember the story? Hmm? <clears throat> Let us show the reference because they might say this is he's making things up. <clears throat> uh, all right. Brothers and sisters. Let us introduce for you the account of Harut and Marut. Takbir. Okay. True story. I mean, Muhammad don't lie. Islam don't lie. Allah tell the truth. Hmm. So, this is the story of Harut and Marut. There is two angels. They came to Allah. They said to him, are you going to make someone inherit the earth? This is about Adam. And then Allah, he said to them, uh, uh, you know, Adam will not do mischievement. I know more than what you know, you idiot. So he said to them, okay, uh, who want to make small donation? You want us to make small donation? Okay, uh, small donation. All right. So uh, he said to them, okay, you know what? I will make you have all the temptation like Adam, and I will send you down to see if you would do better than Adam. So he sent them. This is the story here in front of you. <clears throat> And then this woman, she is very sexy and beautiful woman. All right. So Allah, he removed all the curtains because Allah, he always speak from behind the curtain. The Quran says, you know, 
Hijab is a curtain. It's not really a scarf you put in the head of the sky so that he uh, may make his power visible to the angels. See, the power of Allah is behind the curtain. And then he sent those two angels to the earth in the form of two handsome men. That must be me. And then he made them come in the Babylon. Where? In the Babylon, brother. <laughs> okay. In the river of the Babylon. When they come to the earth, they saw a beautiful woman advancing toward them. She was fully adorned and so performed and her face was unveiled. Oops, haram. Disgusting women. And then they were forbidden. So now, okay, she's unveiled. And now the two angels had thought about the women. Ah, the angels start thinking like whiz, 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 whiz. And right away, they start thinking like about boom, boom. So they have thought about the women they are forbidden from. They discuss between themselves and then they decide to walk away from the temptation. After walking a few steps, look how strong they're, 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 guys, they walk away from the temptation. I mean, look at this. I mean, look at the details, man. They walk a few steps. Muhammad, he knew it all. Few steps, not like, it's not, it's not even 10 steps. See, it's not like they walk for a mile or two miles. Few steps. And they say, man, we cannot leave this woman ago. And then, uh, Bashin over overpowered them and they returned to that woman and asked her to allow them to have sex with them. Look, what, what the heck? What a naughty, what a naughty angels that you know. And by the way, like you know, there's verses in the, in the Old Testament about uh, uh, the daughters of the angels, you know. And this is speaking about simply that there's God, He created people as in certain way, like angels, and then those people they start having, let us say everything is forbidden everything is not right it's not about angel having sex muhammad here talking about a fiction story learned mostly it's coming from the greek because we see venus in the story so they said to her if you allow us to have sex with you please she said okay i will i will allow you only if you adopt my religion, look at this woman, Venus. She want to convert them to convert them. She want to convert them. They inquire her religion. They said, I can only fulfill the desire of the one who worship my Allah. Huh? See, another Allah. <laughs> Venus, she have a different Allah. And who protest before my Allah, which is an idol. Allah is an idol. And then she pointed toward an idol here we go you see it Allah is an idol saying this is my Allah the angel look at one another and explain exclaimed exclaimed excuse my funny English now two sins two the two of them you know uh, the, so they commit two sins instead of one anyway so the story here continue and then later she make them drink wine which says haram haram you drink wine and they made a drink wine she made them took off their panties and they took off their panties blah 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 and then when they are going to have sex she said i'm going to let you do boom boom unless you tell me the password to go to allah to the heaven look what she want the password yes brother she want a password so here it says, uh, let us see. I'm just trying to make the story short. Hey. Okay, look, she said, she said here, uh, uh, she will not please them with them until they teach her the way to go of going to the heaven. There's a way, like certain word you have to say, like haratut, maratut, shakatut, tatatut. You know, they go to heaven. All right, and then it says, Now these two angels used to decide people dispute during the day and go up to heaven at night. <whistles> boing, 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 and go up and down. This is what the Quran says. You are rejoin, you know, the Quran says, But it takes them 1,000 years, suppose, in the Quran, how they can go at night. They refused to teach the women how to go to heaven, and she returned did not feel their desire. 
Okay, so now, okay, she said, okay, if you don't teach me how to go to heaven, I will not do boom boom with you. Okay, at least, hello, the angels now, they are horny. At least the angels agreed to the last wish of the woman. Also taught her how to go up to heaven. In order to experiment, she uttered the word taught by them. See, there's a word you say you go to heaven. Like you say, Kabich, you are in heaven. You know, Kabich. So they said Kabich. Okay, and now the Muslim, they will say, see, he's lying. It doesn't say Kabich. It's a different word. <laughs> I mean, from all this lie, Kabich is the lie. Anyway, so, so they taught her, so she uttered the word which taught by them and at once reached heaven while two stood wide eyed like 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 they were like what like what you know i mean look how stupid you give her the key for the car and she is inside and now she told them i will have sex with you if you give me the key you eat it you just told her the word she will go so they told her the word guys i will give you the reference no problem she said, give me a second give me a second no problem here we go this is the reference now this is this is the reference here we go don't drive me crazy here we go this is a muslim website not nothing nothing uh, <laughs> So, I mean, never, never give the word to go to heaven if you are an angel to a woman. And actually, I'm surprised that this woman, she went to heaven. She did not say, like, give me the password to get, like, makeup for free, uh, facial for the face for free, uh, like, uh, you know, uh, cream for free. I mean, she want to go to heaven when you go to heaven. So this woman... Because she is beautiful, she does not need makeup. See the point? See the point, brother? The point, there's a point here. She's very beautiful. So, because she is beautiful, she didn't ask for a password for the beautification stores or beautification apps in Google. No, she need to go to heaven. All right? So, they told her the word, and so, supposedly, the right away when she tell, they tell her the word, she would take off her panty. But this evil woman, when they told her the word, she said the word right away. Like chaka chaku chaka kika. And bingo. She is in, she is with Allah in heaven. And then look what Allah he said he did. And then Allah he turned the women into a star. What is the name of the star? Venus. <laughs> I mean, come on. Shouldn't you, all of you, believe now? What's wrong with you? Honestly, what's wrong with you? This is Venus's story. And here they give you the reference. Like, you click at one, you go to the reference. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Venus, brother, Venus. Venus. True story. I met Venus before, by the way. But you know the problem she have a uh, she have a mother, and I said to myself, I, if I if I marry Venus, I will get her mother with her. And her mother she was like horrible. You know, all Venus their mother is horrible. You know, so I said to myself, no, forget about her. I will send her to heaven. I gave her the keys to the heaven. She you know this way I can hit two birds in the same time. I hit Allah because she will annoy Allah. Imagine Venus in the heaven with Allah. And look, Allah, he returned her back. And he turned her as a star. Mm -hmm. What a punishment to make her a star. I mean, supposedly now Allah, he punished the women. So he made her a star. <clears throat> and look, even here it says, uh, they drank in wine and wine, and they killed the man unlawfully, and therefore Allah has kept them uh, chested in the Babylon. They are now the two angels. They are in the Babylon tower until now, brother. And the magician were learning magic from those two angels. So Allah He judged them to open a school in the Hari Buter in the Babylon, and that Allah. Uh, metaphorizes the, that woman into a star, Venus. Even even they agree her name is Venus. Look, even the Muslim agree that this is Venus.
Harut and Marut. So my friend, I'm supposed that I will make a short video, but you deserve a little bit long because I was away for some time. And by the way, I'm busy doing some work, so I will be busy for coming few days too. But we will be back soon in normal way. So my friend, if you are a Muslim, I'm not making fun of you. You are smart. You are in the year 2021. The Russian already they have stations. They are people, they are in the space living full time. The American, they will be landed in, the, in Mars soon and they will establish, they will build a station too. And you are talking about Harut and Marut and Venus and Gog and Magog and virgins who they are waiting for us and you can see through their bones. I don't know. I mean, human being is very funny, very weird. Human being actually is the only one can be fooled so easy. Like you see, an animal, he can be fooled by hunger. As an example, you can you can trap a bird by some seeds. You can trap a rabbit by a carrot. But this is food. But a human being can be trapped in many ways. And sometimes it's astonishing how a human being can be trapped. It is really astonishing. Sometimes you ask yourself, what happened to the brain of a human being? You see, somebody can, might say the same for the Christians too. Okay, you Christian believe that there is uh, someone, his name is Jesus, and uh, you know, he's born of a virgin, you know. You can you can say you can accuse us with the same, and then we say to you, okay, it's just a belief. We this is what we believe, but there is a huge difference. You see, everything about Christ is about the accomplishment accomplishment of a Christ. If a Christ in a story, let us say he's a person in the story, a story, fiction story, let us say. A person who have no father, okay, but this person, he did amazing things. And what he said by his own mouth 2,000 years ago is astonishing. Go and find me one thing Christ, he said, is not, is not astonishing. Amazing. Love your enemy. I mean, you know he killed he killed the, the the evil of revenge inside us he killed the hate inside us he killed everything can destroy a human being so christ stories he used even let us say parables like as an example to teach us but they are amazing they fit today with our life story today they fit with you in the year 2020. What those stories in the Quran have to do with us? And how those can help us? What does this have to do with me? Why God he need to make verses saying a prophet, any woman she give you herself to have sex with her? Why the prophet he need to have such a verse? And why Allah he care? What does this have to do with God? You know, a human being can be a trap by many fictions, including atheists, like Big Bang. But there's no proof of it. It's, it's a theory. That is a fiction too. But at least that Big Bang theory, let us say, <clears throat> it's a, it's under, let us say, behind the curtain of mystery, and that make it survive. But how Islam can survive? After all of this, you see, because like when you say the Big Bang and you are an atheist, you want to believe in it, it's a theory and the theory doesn't make sense for me, but makes sense for you. But because it's a theory, it's hard to prove and it's hard to disapprove. Depend in the logic of the person. But 
the theory at the end of the day is still is a theory. So I cannot make fun of it except saying it's stupid because you say there was nothing and something explode. How there was nothing yet something explode. So there is something, but you cannot explain what something is. And you cannot explain where it's coming from. So you did not find how the creation work. It's a theory. But to go to the level of Harut and Marut, magic, to go to the level, and this is real, this is reality, it's not like you know a miracle. Uh, uh, God he sent two angels to open a school to teach magic so the man and the wife will fight. I mean, what is that for? What is the reason for this? How, how God, he opened a school for magic and the purpose is wife and husband fighting. Anyone can tell me what is the purpose of this story? Why God want to do that? Do we have anyone? And is it really that if you fight with your wife, this is because somebody did magic to you? You want to go to Jamaica so you can visit some voodoo stores? You see, if this magic is true, then those who can do magic, they can control president, the more, most powerful people in the world. They can even control the lotto if the magic is true. Don't be a fool and believe in Hori Buter. Why God want to open a school to harm you and to harm us? What is the purpose of God? He wants us to kill each other. Do jihad against those who don't believe in me. You see, in the Old Testament, when the Jews, they go to war and they go with unbelievers too. But the problem, it was not just they are unbelievers. You know, we are talking about thousands of years ago. And people they are fighting for surviving the strong it's like a it's like the ocean you know the big fish eat the small fish so when people read the Old Testament they try to think about it in the eyes of somebody live in 2021 always when you read a story go back on time so I do the same with Islam and I say okay at that time there was a slavery there was killing there was evil People kill each other, but this guy Muhammad made it clear. He is after sex and money. He said, attack the Romans so you can get the blondie girls. Can you believe it? How a prophet of God, he did not say attack the Romans so you can spread Islam, no. He did not say attack the Romans so they can believe in Allah, no. He said attack the Roman so you can get the yellow women, the daughters of the yellow as they call them in Arabic. The daughters of the yellow. And the one who said to Muhammad, don't tempt me by the blonde women. Quran call him evil person, hypocrite. Hypocrite. Uh, the Roman, eh? Let me find you the reference. But I'm sure you will not find it in, Ar in English. We will find it in Arabic only. I have already the TFC, but I'm just trying to find. Here we go. This is the official. Let us show you. This is the official government website of the Kingdom of Jordan. This is TFC Al Tabari. It says here, Muhammad said, "Ighzu Tabuk, Tarnu Bunat Al Asfar, Wanisa Al Rum." Attack Tabuk. 
This is where the Roman at that time they used to have their first base close to Arabia. The book is simply now is part of Saudi Arabia borders in the borders with Jordan. Uh, so attack the book and you will get the blonde diggers. Translate to English. Okay. Invade Tabuk and conquer the girls of Asfar. Asfar mean the yellow. So simply the translation is not too much accurate, but it says attack Tabuk so you can get the blondie girls. And then a guy he said to him, Don't tempt me by the blondie girls, which in Arabic it says the yellow. They call them the Banatul Asfar, the yellow, because their hair supposedly is like golden yellow. What kind of a prophet he says attack and get the blonde diggers? This is what Muhammad is about. Sex, money, fiction stories, collection of evil. Imagine I say to you now, attack, let us attack somebody, he have a blonde daughter. That's what Muhammad is saying. Those guys, didn't, they did not do anything to him. He just attacked the Romans so we can get the blonde girls. And I just showed you the link. You can do the same yourself. You can uh, translate using Google Translation. Oh, Ibn Kathir in English have it? Okay, let me check in Ibn Kathir in English. Hold on, give me a second. <coughs> uh, thank you for telling me. Let us see Ibn Kathir in English. Because, you know, Ibn Kathir in English, usually, they, they took a lot of stuff. It's not there anymore. So we cannot trust this English translation. Oh, hold on. We want uh, it to see here, Quran.com, Ibn Kathir, okay. <clears throat> Let us see. Yeah, here we go. This is Ibn Kathir. Let me pause the link for you. I will put it on the screen. This is the link. And even Ibn Kathir, he report the story. But again, here in the story of Ibn Kathir, it doesn't show really everything. You know, it doesn't say the daughter of the yellow, it doesn't say anything. Attack, attack the Roman and get the blonde girls. Yeah, Ibn Kathir in English doesn't say anything actually. It's gone. Miraculous way. <coughs> As usual. Actually, if we go to Ibn Kathir, Let us see Ibn Kathir in Arabic. But anyway, we showed you the proof anyway, and already, so it doesn't make any difference anyway. Uh, this is what Islam is about. Sex, money, gang system, supremacist, white supremacist. And this is why Islam is very dangerous. You know, the Quran says that Muslims are the best of mankind for the benefit of the mankind. And the Muslims, they keep quoting that for people because people are ignorant. So, how Muslims are the best of mankind, according to Islam? 
when you hear this you will say oh that's that's good i mean the best of you is good to, to the one is good to the people right this muslim keeps saying that the, the best of you is the one who is uh, good to the people how a muslim can be good to the people according to muhammad read carefully you are the best people ever raised for the benefit of mankind if you are a muslim you will be proud about this you are the best of the people ever raised for the benefit the benefit when you see the word benefit there is no way you will think in a negative way there is no way you will think about evil no way it says in front of you for the benefit what's wrong with you hmm. in fact in arabic it doesn't say that this is the muslim translation it says you are so you are the best of mankind supremacist white supremacist how they are the best in which way the best of mankind are those who bring them bring who mankind with the chains around their necks until they embrace Islam and thereby and thereby brother and sisters save them from the punishment of hell fire and go to heaven See how noble ISIS is? See how wonderful they are, brother? They are not. They are trying to help you. They wage war in you. They rape your women. They, you know, they capture the Yazidi, the Christians, the Shia. They capture everybody in their way, but their purpose is noble. They want to humiliate you. They want to rape you so you can convert to Islam at the end, maybe before they kill you. Somebody saying his name is Key IP. Nice try. What nice try? It's in the front of you. Guys, it's in the front. I mean, look at the Muslims. We are showing them the reference in the front of their eyes and a nice try. <laughs> nice try. <laughs> As the Chinese, they say, he left as a donkey, he never came back as a horse. So, you know, the video we make here is for those people who we can, we can make them horses. But I can do that only if you are not a donkey. But if you are a donkey, I cannot make you a horse. Trust me, I will not be able, I am not a Christ, I cannot do miracles. If you are a donkey, you will stay a donkey. Nice try, my friend. Nice try. So, actually, I learned a lot of things the Chinese they said in the ancient days. I like it. And actually, uh, I watched a video once a while ago about a Chinese a, a preacher, and he explained how the Chinese alphabet is uh, is telling the story about the flood of Noah and etc. It's amazing. I, I never know that. You can watch it yourself. I'm sure you can find it. Anyway, guys, I want to say thank you for being here. Um, uh, I hope uh, I'm, I'm really busy these days. I'm doing some handy work, you know, um, uh, building a spaceship to go to, to to sky because I want to look at the tablet, which Allah, he have. He put it between the eyes and the, and the angel Israfil. I mean, have you ever heard of a God? He have a tablet. And he, he wrote there things nobody knows. And he put it between the two eyes of the angel. You know, imagine yourself an angel. I mean, put yourself in, in, the, in the shoes of an angel. Hmm? Just think about it for a second. And then there is a God. His name is Allah. Allow me to use my art for a second. This is the angel Israfil. This is the, his name. I don't know what I can say to you. Even the name is a theft. Jibra'il, Israfil, Mikael, even the names Muhammad he have for the angels are a theft. So this is Israfil. And those are his two eyes. Allah, look how smart Allah is. Unbelievable. He placed his tablet, which is huge, between his eyes. Why? 
Because you cannot read it if it's between your eyes. Hello? It's impossible. But what if somebody came in front of him? <laughs> the poor angel is the last one to read it. But about if somebody came in front of him? <coughs> yeah, he plays it and the brothers and sisters, the tablet of Allah is covered by diamond and pearl and jewels around it. You know, you see those uh, phone covers for the phones, you know, they put things crazy stuff. So brother, in around around the tablet, there's pearls, brother. Look, look, the pearls around it, brother. And then, brother, in the middle of the tablet, there is the secrets of Allah, which Allah, he ordered the pen to write all things. Everything is there. Everything is there in the tablet. Uh, true story. <clears throat> true story. I'm convinced. Allah, you have a tablet. The first, what the first thing Allah created? Anyone remember? The first thing Allah created, the pen. Look how educated Allah is. And then Allah told the pen to write. Uh -huh. And then the pen said to Allah, write what? He said to him, write a decree of everything. <whistles> Read carefully, brother. The Prophet of Allah said, the first thing Allah created was the pen, and he told it to write. And when it asked him, Allah, the pen asked Allah, see the pen talk, this is very high tech pen. He, what I should write? Hmm? Like, hello, you tell me right, write what? What I should write? So Allah, he told it what to write. What was a decree? So it right what had been taking place and what would take place to all eternity. I mean, hold on. What taking place already and he is the first one to be created? Hmm. I guess the first thing the pen he wrote, I was created then. True story. Yep. All right. Uh... Uh, there's a guy his name is Kip30 my friend you can come you know as when we come back again I don't know I mean maybe tomorrow maybe a few days from now I'm really busy these days but any any time you feel like you want to call us we use pal talk and you can join us and we will be happy to have you so I want to say thank you guys for being here I need to, to look for my pen because I'm going to, um, to order the pen to decree everything for you I'm going to decree who of you will win the lotto. I will decree for you who have corona. I will decree for you who his wife she will fight with him. I will decree for you who his mother-in-law she will open her mouth all wide on him. I will decree for you like uh, an ant biting you. Everything is decree of Allah. Everything, brother. It's the decree of Allah. And all of it is written by that pen. And even the Quran says, if the whole ocean, or if all the seas, they were ink, they will not be enough to write the word of Allah. Yet we can print the Quran in less than one ounce of ink. Unbelievable. If all the ocean, they were ink, they will not be enough to write the word of Allah, which is written already by that pen in that tablet. <laughs> Thank you very much for being here. May the Lord bless you. 
and enter will see you soon again. Christ is Lord, Islam is false. And trust me, nobody can change you except yourself. I'm here just to help, I'm here just to share, but it is you who make decision to be smart or to be stupid, to be smart or to be silly, to think and to use the God which God gave you as a gift, something called the brain, use it or you will lose it. If you don't use your brain, so why you have it? What for? Why you need it? Use it, my friend. Don't let people fool you. There's evil people. Yes, it's true. And Muhammad obviously was nothing but evil man. Thank you all for being here. And here we go. When I am leaving, suddenly we have all the Muslims going to debate me. I was here for the last two hours. We did not get one. But as soon as I say, okay, guys, take care. See you soon. Suddenly you see the Muslims all over. They want to debate me. And they are so brave. So brave. I'm going to make a knot for you. So you will come next time. Thank you. And take care. God bless you all. Bye-bye.